Dude, I'm predicting big things for the Leafs right here. Well, that's kind of weird considering they lost 4 nothing. What do you got for me, Hockey Domus? Okay, call it a hunch. Call it me being a genius. But I think the Leafs are going to go undefeated between today and March 2nd. I got to figure out how to convert the file into a different sort of file so that it works in this video file. Leafs lose 4 to nothing to the St. Louis Blues. I guess you could say they're singing the- Dude, don't say that. Everyone says that. It's not clever. Don't do it. Fine, Mom. Seriously, though, a 4 nothing loss? Not exactly how you want to go into the break. But this game, a lot like the Leafs, well, entire season, if it started differently, things could have turned out much better. This allowed goals, missed chances, goal posts. They score in any one of those opportunities in the first period. You got yourself a hockey game, my friend, but nope, Chris Mason gets a shutout. And to add a little salt to the wound for the Leafs, Alex Steen scored a goal and Carlo Koliakovo had an assist. How many points did Leafs Dempniak have? Oh. And this game was a battle of completely unepic proportions. You got the worst home team in the league at home taking on the worst road team in the league on the road. Like betting on a horse race with two donkeys. But guys, I want to talk to you about something because a lot of the comments and messages I've received so far aren't really about what happened in this game. They're about the game existing. After scheduling a boatload of games featuring Canadian teams at the World Juniors, the NHL had seven games scheduled during the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games. Now it's easy to say, oh, they should have pushed it forward a day, maybe they could have started the season a day earlier, but, but it is a little more difficult than that. That being said, really? I know it's a compacted schedule, I know everything's been really tough on the players because it's an Olympic year, but come on. Like, they scheduled the Canucks to play against Columbus. I would love to see the ratings for that game. I mean, I'm in Vancouver, and I didn't hear anyone say Canucks until after 10 o'clock. When the game was over. But getting back to serious matters, Brian Burke spoke publicly yesterday for the first time since his son Brendan was killed in a car accident. I know people have their opinions about what he's done with the team, where he's going, the direction, and all that. But you have got to respect the remarkable heart and fortitude of Brian Burke, the way he handled himself in that press conference. And like Brian Burke said, he'll never stop grieving. You're not supposed to bury your son, but I hope over this break he can find some happiness and some peace in his life. And to move forward, because like he said in the press conference, it's what Brendan would have wanted. And the world of sports certainly isn't immune to tragedy. And sadly, we were reminded of that again with the passing of Georgian loser Nodar Kumari Tashvili, who, like Brendan Burke, was only 21 when he passed away. I said this in a past video, guys. Call the people that are the most important to you and tell them that you love them. And I hope you get to spend a lot of time with those people and cherish that time with those people during this Olympic break. So this is it till March, guys. I'm done uh, leaf blogging for a little bit, but you can always check out my stuff on nike-training.ca. Obviously, I'm here in Vancouver to uh, cover the Olympics. So be sure to check those out, guys. Link in the sidebar. We already started making some vidges, and I hope you enjoy the break. Peace, guys.